Hey everyone, it's Tessa from Meyer Hatchery. We're getting in the holiday spirit today by making some homemade cards and decorations with feather printing. So today, we're gonna to be doing two different types of feather printing. We have printing directly onto the feather and then using the feather to print directly onto paper. So let's get started. For this project, depending on which style you're doing, you'll basically need the same instruments to make it happen. So you're gonna need paper to print on. You're gonna to wanna to have a nice collection of different kinds of feathers. You can either buy or collect these from your coop. Just make sure if you're collecting them from your coop that they're clean and bug free. Um, and then you're gonna need acrylic paint. You can use paint brushes. Um, in this, I'm actually going to be using uh, this specialized jelly roller for some of the prints, which is available um, through our Amazon affiliate links. And um, this is what's gonna print onto the actual feather. So with that kit, it came with its own accessories, which are like some popsicle sticks, some yarn, some bubble wrap, things to add texture. Some other things that you might want, glitter. Um, you'll need some parchment paper for transferring. And then for the jelly kit, you will need some baby wipes to clean it up. So before we get started, I just wanna talk about paper quality. So an average piece of computer paper, like this right here is actually really nice computer paper or copy paper. And this is 20 pound paper, if you've ever seen that on the outside of your package. This paper right here was from, um, actually this one, this sketchbook, this is 50 pound paper. And I'm gonna show you the difference here just by kind of uh, crumpling them a little. So copy paper, I don't know if you can hear the difference, I can, but in terms of being able to see through them, this one's thinner, this one's thicker. So the higher in pounds, the thicker the paper is gonna be. Now, depending on what you're making these for, if it's holiday cards or for a frameable piece of artwork, you're gonna want thicker paper, not only so it doesn't bleed through, but also so that it can uh, maintain over time. So something like cardstock, that's a good bet, though the shinier the surface, the harder the paint takes to it. So if you use something like watercolor paper, which this right here is super, super heavy, heavy duty watercolor paper. I got this off of a block. This is like an eighth of an inch thick um, and it has a lot of texture to it. So if you can find some watercolor paper that has minimal texture, which is usually gonna be a cold press paper, that's gonna be your best medium but if you're making holiday cards, if you get this stationary set that's made for holiday card making, that type of card stack is really easy to adhere to and you'll be able to use acrylic on it. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get dirty. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the jelly printing. This is going to put an image on your feather. So we're not gonna use the feather for the artwork, the feather is going to be the artwork. So inside the jelly kit, uh, it comes with this jelly plate which feels like it feels like that uh stuff that you get on like the back of a gift card that you have to pick off it's kind of stretchy like that um one side or actually both sides have like a protective layer on it which i am removing from the front but i'm not going to remove it from the back because i don't want it to stick to anything it does have kind of like that sticky texture so uh, the first thing that we are going to do is we're gonna apply paint right onto our jelly pad. Now we can do this in layers. So we do it one color at a time. I am going to make this one um, be texturized in the back and then I am going to add polka dots on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of paint to my jelly, what pad? I get jelly pad here. Um, and then we're going to add on top of that. So uh, color mixing wise, I'm gonna do red and green, but don't put them both on here because red and green mixed together makes Rudolph Brown, which is not what I'm going for. So I'm gonna do just red first. And I am just going to apply dots of this paint across here because I'm not trying to fill the entire glass plate. My feathers are not that big and that would be a waste of my time. So I have, I have no junk paper. Okay, there we go. I'll set that right there. So with that on there, what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna kind of scrape it along in here so that I've got kind of like, almost like candy cane lines in the background. 
and then I'll hold it up. So this little tooled piece is, I mean, you could take a credit card or an old gift card and you could cut the edges to do this if you don't have one of these at home. It is not necessary to have the jelly pad. It just makes it a lot easier. You could do this on um, something as simple as like the, the styrofoam that you get your meat in at the grocery store. That's a really good alternative too if you don't wanna buy the actual kit. So you could use that styrofoam tray to put the paint on uh, and then it's disposable. You don't even have to wash it, which is a bonus. So I've spread that on there. Now um, I'm gonna do this on a white feather so that we can really see what's happening. Uh, so what happens is this paint is on. I am now going to put my feather directly on. Then I have these pre-cut pieces of parchment paper. It's gonna go right over top. And then I am going to use this roller to press it out. So this just makes sure that it transfers on equally, evenly, and it allows it to press in since this jelly plate is um, formidable, if that might be the right word. It's manipulative, you can move it. So now I'm gonna take this off. Ah, don't get on there. I'm gonna take that off, put that over here, and now this is for step number one. Now <laughs> this is kind of scary, didn't think about red on a feather. Um, but. We're gonna add some color to it so this doesn't look like a tragic accident, and then we're gonna go from there. So, red is on. I'm gonna set my feather down face side up. Ooh, that looks so scary. I need a baby wipe. Baby wipe, baby wipe. Clean this off. And then I'm gonna add my next, next layer because this is like traumatizing me. If I were to leave this out and my kids got home, there would be some pretty sad and confused girls if they thought this was a feather I was keeping in the house. All right, so <clears throat> for polka dots, they have this sweet little mold, which is like little, um, it almost looks like a, the inside of a beehive. So I'm gonna set that on here and I am going to apply paint to it. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna put the paint right on. So I'm gonna use green paint this time so that it doesn't look like a massacre. And I am going to spread the green paint all the way out all the way across my little pad here. That should be good. There we go. Then, where did I put my other brush? Right over here. Then I'm gonna put this down on top that's gonna block some of the paint from coming through. And then I'm gonna take my scary feather <laughs> and I'm gonna set it on top. New piece of parchment paper. And let's roll. Ooh. Please look good, don't look bad. All right, wish me luck here. I think it's gonna be good. Oh, it is, okay, good. Oh, I was nervous. Okay, so now I have a second layer on top. So I've got the red underneath, I've got the green on top, and I'm gonna let that dry, but while it dries, I'm a big fan of glitter, I don't know about you. Uh, so I am going to sprinkle some glitter on it while it's uh, drying so that the, the glitter adheres without me having to use any glue. Oh man, oh man. Apparently everything is gonna be covered in glitter today. So let's just go ahead and put that glitter on there while it dries. And I'm gonna set that off to the side so it can finish drying. And then we'll see if we wanna add something else. I'm kind of feeling like maybe I wanna do a set of white dots on there too, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna set this glitter somewhere because it's attacking me with its festiveness. Go on. All right, I'm gonna clean up my station and then I'm gonna show you how to print with the feathers. Okay, well, I am glitter bombed, but I'm ready to keep going because it doesn't bother me, I love glitter. So we are now going to do feather printing uh, instead of feather painting. Now this is gonna involve painting onto a piece of parchment, putting our feather in and then pressing it or going directly from feather onto paper. So I'm gonna do feather onto paper first. Now, if you have a feather that has a really stiff quill, go ahead and break it a little bit. And that's just gonna help it be more pliable when you're putting it on your paper, because if you'll notice, a lot of the feathers are curved and that's wonderful for the bird, but when it comes time for printing, it's, it's kind of difficult. So I have like this little feather right here is a good example. If you look at it, it's pretty straight. So I'm just gonna go at the bottom and kind of manipulate the quill just a tiny bit. And I love this feather, by the way. Look at the lacing. Oh. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with a large feather. 
And this was one that was included in that kit, that's fine. I'm going to print on the inside of this feather because when I am pressing it, um, I, I, I want it to go on seamlessly. And if you put it with the curved bowed end, you kind of have to rock it back and forth. So I'm gonna be painting on the interior. And for this one, I'm just gonna create kind of an ombre of colors that go from um, green to blue. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and I am going to paint on directly to the feather. Now, <clears throat> I am using acrylic because it does have a, sh a short dry time, but not like so short that um, I can't get it from paint to paper in time. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with green, and if you've watched any of my other videos, I am not a brush washer, which I know scares a lot of you. So I'm going right into the blue. Trust me, it's the best. So we are going to add some blue into it now, and that's gonna give us a teal in the middle. And when I'm doing this ombre, I overlap about a quarter inch of my colors and pull the first color down, and then reload my brush with the second color so that I have an area of both colors that then transitions into one color. So that's a little fun trick when doing these ombres. Now, so I've got my green transitioning into blue and now I'm just gonna transition into white. So I'm gonna use the edge of my white so I don't totally dirty it up. And I'm gonna go about a quarter inch back onto the blue with my white so that I have a nice light blue. And pull it down onto the ends one more dab of white so that I have white, white, white at the ends. I can't imagine if chickens came in this color. Well, I guess it's kind of like a peacock. Maybe I should add a peacock to my wish list. No, I can paint the feathers. All right, so I've got this feather ready to go. It's painted from top to bottom. What I'm gonna do is um, I'm doing this one as a practice. So I suggest that you do this at least three or four times to make sure you've got the steps right before you try and go ahead and do it directly onto your cards. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay that feather down. I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper, set it on top, and then I'm just gonna use my fingertips to gently let it press onto the paper. You could also use that jelly roller from the other kit too. If you don't have it, this is the easy way to go. All right, now when I pick up this parchment paper, the feather's probably gonna come with it, yep. All right, so I got a partial print, a partial print that's not gonna fly. And I'm gonna tell you what happened. I didn't use enough paint, so let's try this again. I'm gonna use the same feather, take it back over here, get off there, and I'm gonna beef up the paint. So this is something too, when you are doing this at home, depending on the thickness and quality of your paper, you might have to print more than once and that's okay. You've got time, right? I've got time. I would much rather be doing this than going out with the birds in this cold weather, even though I know that they are out there going, we have the worst mom in the world. She doesn't ever come out here. She's left us alone. But yes, I have. All right, more paint added now. I'm gonna try this again. So I'm gonna set it in the same position. Boop. Grab my parchment. Actually, look at this parchment paper. Holy cats, maybe I did that backwards. I'm gonna save that. Let's try that again. Get on there. Get on there. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so from far away, it looks like a mess, but we're gonna let these dry. I'm gonna make a couple of other prints and then I'm gonna show you how you can use pens and other accessories to make these pop and to add more texture to them. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and print a couple more feathers around here. I'm gonna let them dry and then I'm gonna show you exactly how we can make them look fantastic. See you in a bit. All right, everything is dry. So I've got my printed feather. So this could be affixed to a card or to an ornament as a gift, which is absolutely stunning. Um, you could also use these in making a wreath like in one of my previous videos. So then for my actual feather prints, 
I've got two on here that I really love. Oh, there goes more glitter. <laughs> I've got two on here that I really love. I've got this um, candy cane kind of one and then this one that looks like my peacock feather. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna cut these out <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then using um, gel ball rollers, I'll add some decor. I, if the, the quill had not gone through on these, I would have drawn it back in, but they did. So you can cut these out, affix them to your holiday cards, or they could be a frameable piece of artwork. So if you did it just right, you could set this up into a frame, put the name of the chicken whose feather it belonged to or the time of year. It's a great way to memorialize your birds as well. So try it out, see how it works. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to us, but also be sure to like and subscribe and make sure you click that bell because the other videos that come out, if you wanna be the first to know, that's the best way to do it. Have a great day, everybody, from Meyer Hatchery.